So guns are very specific tools. Sadly, Jefferson Davis, then Secretary of War, decided that the U.S. 1855 pistol carbine could be a carbine for dragoons and a pistol for cavalrymen. Didn't work out so well. So even well into the 1850s, the U.S. Ordnance Department is generally a conservative outfit. But they do take a, a step forward just immediately before the Civil War with the model 1855 rifle musket, which uses the Maynard tape primer system, and then also the model 1855 pistol carbine, which also uses the Maynard tape primer system. And while the model 1855 rifle musket was largely a very useful platform, saw extensive service during the Civil War, the 1855 pistol carbine was a concept that really was, in large part, a swing and a miss. The U.S. pistol carbine being, as it sounds, a pistol and a carbine combined. Uh, it was a 17-inch long single-shot percussion pistol uh, that had a detachable shoulder stock, and which expanded the whole length of the thing to about 28 inches. The pistol carbines were initially issued to the, uh, the first U.S. Cavalry. They took them into the field and found them basically unsatisfactory. Like any combination gun uh, that's supposed to be two things, it's neither. As a pistol coming out in 1855, it was already well behind the power curve of Colt's revolvers that were uh, the mainstay of the marketplace at that point. Why have a single shot muzzle loader when you can have a six shot revolver in your hand? As far as uh, a carbine concern, you know, putting the, the shoulder stock on it, evidently uh, they never really tightened down that well. They were wobbly, they, they, which led to inaccuracy. And they couldn't really compete when you had something like a Sharps. The problem is that when you have a 12 inch barrel 58 caliber pistol, it's a heavy gun. And so it was awkward and cumbersome to shoot single-handed as a pistol. And then when you attach the shoulder stock, 12 inches, even though it's long for a pistol, it's short for any kind of carbine. So you're not getting the velocity and you're not really getting the muzzle energy that you would get out of a more traditional style cavalry carbine. So it was anemic on that front and it was unwieldy on the pistol front. And generally speaking, the Dragoons who tested it hated it. When the Civil War breaks out, the federal government needs every kind of arm it can get. And so the Model 1855 pistol carbine enters military service. Now, it's understood that these guns are not exactly what you'd call frontline material. And so even though they have this shortage of arms, especially for the cavalry at the time, a lot of these guns are mostly seen out west. I mean, they're in uh, Indiana cavalry units, Illinois, Missouri, Ohio, West Virginia, and from the perspective of the Civil War theater, that's out west. That's where not a whole lot of things are happening. This whole system of firearms are unique in that they're made for a Maynard tape primer. The Maynard tape primer was used in lieu of a single percussion cap, and it was just like the old 1940s, 50s, 60s roll of uh, paper caps for cap guns. And it would roll around inside this little compartment and the hammer would come down. Every time you cocked the hammer, it would advance another one. It's ingenious and under the proper circumstances, it worked just fine. The problem is in cold weather, they became brittle and hot weather, they became gummy and, they became gummy and sticky. Hence, the tape priming system for all its cleverness, all its ingeniosity, uh, was really not used all that much. Fortunately, the nipple could also handle a, you know, the, the normal 
top wing percussion cap, which they later used, and that's the way these guns were normally employed. There were better mousetraps, and the 1855 was not the better mousetrap. As a matter of fact, the Confederate General Ewell uh, basically said, these are not suitable for Dragoon use. And Dragoons were basically mounted infantrymen, and so in a worst case scenario, you end up with these guys armed with the 1855 pistol carbine up against other guys that have full rifle muskets with sight radius and, and they can affix bayonets and that sort of thing. And so not an ideal solution, really not.